Good morning. Welcome to Crossroads Online. It's a pleasure to see you all, and I'm glad that you have checked in. Now, before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for this day. I thank you for your great grace and your mercy towards us. Father, we bless you, and I thank you that you will empower me to speak only what you want me to say, and that everyone listening will be blessed by this message. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's get started. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about this message. Now my first point will be the word boast. I looked it up and it says to talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction about one's achievements, possessions, or abilities. It's to brag, crow, swagger, show off, or blow one's trumpet. Now, which brings me with that definition to the title, God can do that. And I want you to repeat after me, God can do that. In Jeremiah 32, 27, listen to what God says. I am the Lord, the God of all peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? I want to emphasize the last few words in that is anything too hard for me. Now you sit down with your family or close advisors and discuss opening a business or doing whatever you want to do in your personal lives for your family or for yourself. You pray about it, but all you have is a business plan and very little money. Now from that point, you have a choice. You can either speak the word of God only and believe that he is with you, or you can doubt in your mind or by what comes out of your mouth, negative things, I don't know if I can do this, Look at the money, look at this, look at that, look at the economy, look at everything else but the word of God. What you might not realize is that this is an opportunity for God to show you his favor, his grace, and his power. Why? Ask me why. Because if you had all the money to do it, you can boast on your own skills your degree, your connection down at the city hall or some big business. But guess what? God would not get the glory that he deserves. And one thing I know about my God, he deserves all the glory. Now Isaiah 45, 2 says, this is what the Lord said to Cyrus. But he said it to Cyrus, but you can apply it to your own situation and circumstance. He said, I will go before you, Cyrus, and level the mountains. I will smash down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Now, when God says, I like the I wills in the Bible, and I underline them a lot. When he said, I will go before you. That means if you're going to Florida, I will go before you. You're going to Africa, I will go before you. I will is a definite promise from God. I will cut down bars. I will make the way straight for you. Those I wills are very important for us to know when we are, when we undertaken something or something happens. God says, I will never leave you. God says, I will do this. I will do that. That's covenant. I will. Now, this is a story I'm going to tell you. God says to someone and his family, I want you to move to Georgia. And you say, what? Georgia? He said, yes, I want you to move to Georgia. You pack up your family, say bye to all that is familiar and move to start a ministry. Now, in the process of doing that, 
God is whispering to you, I will lead you. Don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. I will do the work. All you have to do is to be willing and obedient to do what I say. Now, taking a step like that, it's momentous in someone's life. But that's where the word in them holds them to, to know that God is not going to let them down. And I want to tell you out there who are thinking about big things or wanting to do something mighty for yourself, your family, for God. God will give you an assignment that is too big for you. He will give you an assignment that is too big for you. Ask Moses. Ask Gideon. Ask Elijah. Because when you become successful, you can never boast that you did it. Moses couldn't boast. Elijah couldn't boast. Gideon could not boast. David could not boast. Who did they boast in? God. He wants you to boast on him. And God wants you, me, all his children to be totally dependent on him. Bottom line, he wants to be your only source. Not the system, not your auntie, not everybody. They can help. Wonderful. But God wants you to depend on him as your only source. Can someone say God can do that? Now we look to Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Now, as I just mentioned in the previous statement, I underline everything when I hear God says, I will. I will strengthen you. I will hold you. That is a promise, and God does not lie. So if he's done it for me, he will do it for you. I will hold you up. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Now, with that scripture, I memorized it. The, I held on to that scripture on my way to Russia. And while I lived there for two years, realizing that God says, I will strengthen you, Letitia. I will help you. God was with me. He was not only with me, he kept me from danger, seen and unseen. I was in a foreign land, the only black person in that city. And if you know anything about overseas, it is not too safe. And he will be with you. He was with me in Russia. He kept me, protected me, provided for me, healed me, delivered me. And if he could do that for me in a foreign country, he is with you also in every circumstance and in every situation. But you can't doubt him because he said, I am with you. When God says, I am with you, he is with you. You might not feel him. You might not understand. The world may tell you something different, but he says, I am with you. You might not understand what's going on in your life. But your part only is to trust him. Because it says in Hebrews 13, 5, For God has said, I will never, I will never, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. There goes those I will again. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Now we look to 1 Kings. My next strip, scripture, I love this story. And it says, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house, but I only have a handful of flour left in the jug and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. 
I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. This is a woman from Zarephath talking. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. And that's what God says to us ever, all the time. Don't be afraid. Just hold still. I will be with you. He said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you have said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when, Elijah, when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. There is that word will again. There will be always flour. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. She trusted. That is the key to her miracle. The man of God showed up and she could have argued with him like, you just heard that I have a little meal, little oil, and you're asking me to bake a cake for you. How ins Some people would have said, you're insensitive. But she trusted and was obedient to the prophet's word because where did you get that word? From God. And despite her circumstances, she fed him. And she had enough food for her entire family. Miracle. Someone say with me, God can do that. God can do that. I'm getting excited. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this. Now in Philippians 4.19, and this same God who takes care of me, this is Paul speaking, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now we're getting down to where we live right now. Bills are due and you're short on money. We can all relate. It comes down to a matter of trust. And we can speak to ourselves, we can quote every word in the Bible, but it has to be in your heart that you trust God, regardless of what you see, hear, or read. Because the news will tell you something different. People will tell you something different. But you have to believe your God. Do, you, do we trust that God can make a way where there seems to be no way? Do we trust that he can keep his word? All we have to do is go back in the Bible and saw that God never lied. He kept every promise. We have his word that never fails. The word of God, we can fail, the world will fail, but we, God can never fail. Now, going on further with the family dynamics. Family members, now this is coming down to trust. Family members backsliding, you know, you have some, I have some. Don't worry about it. It is not your job to save anybody. That's God's job. Your job is to preach the gospel. Live a life before them that you can see God. You walk in holy and full of integrity before them. That will draw them. God can bring them back. And I always tell people when I meet them, and I said, how is your relationship with God? Well, not so good. And some are running. Some are still running. I tell them, you can run but you can't hide from God. I don't care where you go. Like David said, if I go up to the mountain, God is there. If I go down in hell, God is there. You can go to a foreign country. You can, get, you can go to another city. God will find you. Now your family members, they can be in a pig pen, wallowing in their sin. Oh yes, you know how pigs like mud, and you there in, in the pig pen wallowing. Oh, mud, mud, mud. Sin. Oh, I feel so good. Sin, sin, sin. Mud, mud, mud. And you're having a good time, or so you think. 
but God can reach down and snatch them out of that pig pen, turn them around and put their feet on the right road. He did it for me. He has done it for people in my life. So he can do it for your family members. Don't preach to them. Don't send them books all the time. If your husband is not saved, don't be vacuuming in front of him and quoting scriptures. Don't be, you know, you know, you know how some people do when they want to get other people's attention regarding God. Don't worry. God is able. And I want you in your spare time because it's too long to read. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. That is about the prodigal son. And we have all been prodigals. So we have to show mercy to the prodigals in our lives and trust God with them. Now, Isaiah 54. I love this chapter. I love this, this, this scripture. It says, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will, there's that word again, their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Do you know when God speaks, he means what he says, and he says what he means. Now, we can all relate to people coming against us, this, this you know, we're in, a, we're in the world. He said, you're going to have persecution in this world, so get ready. It's not, you know, you're going to get cussed out sometimes. We're in the world. People coming against you. They lie about you, slander your name, and accuse you of things that you never did or even thought about doing. It happens. It happened to me. It ha I'm sure it has happened to many of you looking at me online. And I hope you're paying attention. Now, can someone give me an amen? Give, and I'm going to say it. I'm going to give a senior an amen. Okay, I expect to see it. Now, don't, when people do that to you, don't get down in the mud with them because that's what the enemy wants. So you to get down in the mud with them. But believe and trust that God can take care of your enemies. I love the book of Psalms because David, many times he cried out to God, Lord, look at what they're doing to me. Rescue me. Take care of my enemies, punish them, and we can do the same. God loves them like he loves us, but he will protect you. And he will let you know that your deliverance comes only from him. So that's why I say don't get down in the mud with them. Don't tweet or twit whatever you all do. I don't do that. Don't text them. Don't put them on blast on Facebook. Leave them alone. God will vindicate you. God will rescue you. Now, that, that um, scripture, Isaiah 54, 17, I kind of forgot that for a moment. It was many years ago, I think about 18 years ago. I had a supervisor on my job. She harassed me every day. When I say every day, every day I went and she harassed me. This is the part of the harassment. She would call my extension and say to me, are you working? And I said, yes, I want you to promise me that you'll work hard today. And she would hang up the phone. No, she didn't do that with anybody else, but every morning, every morning she would do that with me. She even went so far as to call me to her desk with a slip of paper to sign that I, will, I promise her to work hard that day. And I took it, and I took it, but in the background, Someone was helping me to accumulate all the evidence of what she was doing, down to the date, time, quotation, everything. So one lunchtime, I was so harassed and stressed and aggravated. I went to my car, rolled up the windows, 
put on the radio loud and said the B word. Yes, yes, listen to me. I said the B word and I just didn't say B. I said the whole word at least three times. I know someone is saying, oh, Sister Blenman did that? Yes, I did. Now, can I be honest with you? I'm just, th 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 this was, this was that day. That was a human reaction. But when I said that, when I finished saying that, you know, I kind of chuckled. I took the, off the radio, lowered the window, and then realized that God, I said to myself, Letitia, God can hear you over the music. He heard what you said. So I said, sorry, Lord. Went back to the office. And now in a short span of time, I didn't know all the things that were going on behind the scenes. And I got all my information together, sent it off to Illinois with all the evidence of, of the harassment. God worked it out. They reversed everything that was put not too complimentary about in my file. They reinstated me. I got an overdue raise. And guess what? She quit the same day that they reinstated me and gave me back my raise. She quit. Can someone say God can do that? If he did it for me, he can do it for you. But don't lose perspective, okay? Stick to the word. That was my weak moment. Can I be honest? That was a weak moment. Okay, let's proceed. I, I'm preaching to myself. Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I could sing that song, but <clears throat> I'd rather not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now with that scripture in mind, that no good thing will he withhold from you. You go for a job interview, you, you need a job, you go there, you have your nice suit, your nice dress, your gel in your hair, and you're well prepared, laying it all before the interview, why you are best qualified, why they should hire you, because you'd be great for the company. What you might not be aware of is that God has put it in the interviewer's heart to give you the job, even before you showed up. And afterwards, the interviewing is saying to himself, what? What just happened? And he can't figure it out why he did it. That's God. That's the God we serve. And I always say when something happens, but God. And then you get, you go home maybe or someone else. You get a bad report from the doctor. No, you have a choice. You can get discouraged or you can believe that God has already healed you. He's a God that heals. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. God can turn everything around. And when someone asks you what happened to you, don't forget to tell them God can do that. Because in a recent health issue I had, where my, my you know, Pastor Darren took me to the emergency, Leslie came after, and we were sitting there, they'd run the blood, the urine, everything, they were doing tests, and I was laying on the table waiting for the doctor and the results. And guess what Leslie and I were doing? We were not talking about recipes or talking about a TV show. What we were doing, we were back and forth talking scriptures. She was quoting scripture, I was quoting it back to her, and that's all we did for the length of time that I was lying there waiting for the doctor. And that's what you have to do. I don't wanna hear anything else but the word of God. And that's what my daughter and I was doing, back and forth, talking about the goodness of God. Now, I'm going to go further. Isaiah 46, verse 9. It says, remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God and there's none, none, none like me. Now, when we read experience and experience all the great things God has done, we have no excuse but to open our mouths and testify about our God. We cannot afford in these last days to be quiet, but to tell the goodness of God to anyone who would listen. And it is not to hear ourselves pontificate or 
quote scriptures or how much we know or hear ourselves talk, but to tell the world that there is a God who delivers, who heals, who comforts, who fights our battles, and on and on and on. There is a God who is alive and well. And furthermore, we have to get rid of cuteness and reservedness when it comes to believing and confessing the word of God. We can't be shy anymore or back down when someone is listening to us. We can't even say grace over our food in a restaurant because we don't want to uh, upset people and send them into a panic. The days for keeping our mouth shut, those days are over. COVID has taught us those days are over. If you have not realized, those days are over. The world is screaming about what they believe. We too have to shout about our great and awesome God and tell everyone that, that whatever issue is, whatever the circumstance, whatever the problem, it is God who can do that for you. God can deliver you, heal you, comfort you. We have to tell them they shout in, we have to shout too and be bold about it and not back down. I am radical. I don't back down when it comes to the word of God for no one. And I mean no one. I don't care if it's all the way, all the way up and all the way down. You're not, I'm not backing down because I know what God has done for me and my family. I know. So I'm here to testify. When you're facing an issue, you had better know that God is able. Otherwise, you will be at the mercy of the enemy, and the enemy is Satan, because he comes to steal that word. So doubt in your mind. Make you be afraid. You, have, you, you, you will be at the mercy of him, people, and the system, because the system does not want you to believe in God or to, to, to succeed. When you put your full trust in God and rest in his ability to do what you can do, you'll be like the three Hebrew boys in the furnace, walking around in the fire. And I just, my imagination runs wild when I read the Old Testament. I bet they were inside there, fist bumping, elbow bumping, high-fiving each other, not being harmed by the fire. And we go through fire sometimes. So when you're going through your fire, you high-five somebody, shout praise the Lord, hallelujah, God is able, my God is able. That's what the Hebrew boys were doing. And they came out smelling like roses. And that's what you can do also. You can come out of any situation, any problem, any circumstance, with not even the smell of that issue. When God heals you, Nobody can even tell from your parents or your, your countenance that you were ever even sick. God just brought me through something. I went to see five doctors. First of all, the mammogram came back. They got to read it again. Something is looking funny. Had to go for an ultrasound. While I was there in the ultrasound, I was quoting scriptures. I was singing while she was doing her business. Doctor came back, hands raised. He said, you can go home. I'll see you in a year. That's my God. In John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will, there's that word again, give us what we ask for according to his will. Once we pray, we never give up. Repeat after me, never give up give up. We can then rest knowing that God can do that. Someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm, I'm close enough now. I'm, I'm getting, I'm winding down. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I may, oh, I think I just have another hour of preaching. I'm just joking. So don't, don't, don't get panicky. Don't, don't um, spill your coffee. People of God, listen up. God loves us. He cares about everything in our life. From the smallest to the biggest, everything he cares about. If he can, if he can number our, the hairs on our head, that shows love and caring. This is our father, that he has numbered the very hairs of our head. 
I live uh, where I am. I see birds flying on all in the morning. And they're picking up food. He, can, he drops food. He keeps... Now, think about it. The birds can eat. Cats walking around, they have little munchies to eat. So you think he can't take care of us? We are made in his image. We are his kids. He delights in blessing us. But if you don't believe that he can take care of your smallest or your biggest issues, and that he can fix things, you'll be up one minute speaking faith. Oh, yes, I'm a man of God, a woman of God. Oh, yes. And down the next minute, oh, honey, I don't know how we're going to get this. It don't look like we can get out of debt. Look at these kids, they're running. No, uh-uh. you got to stay steady. you got to stay steady in the word. You can't go back and forth or going by your feelings or any external influences. You can't do that. Not in this time and age. you got to stand. And when you have done all, the Bible says you stand with your shoulders back and your head held high. My God is able. My God can rescue me. My God can put, put food in that pantry. My God can help me pay these bills. The storm may rage. The winds may blow. And you can even stagger a little bit, but you stand. You stand and keep on standing because God is able. And I want to put a little, little plug right now. The reason why some of us in Crossroads are getting stronger and stronger and stronger because we are going through, under the leadership of Pastor Darren, we are going through REACH program where we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I know some of you said Genesis to Revolution, but it's not, it's Revelation. And every two, this is our second year, and we are looking at it, we are dissecting it, we are going over, we are encouraging each other. And if you're not in reach, even if you go to our church or not go, you can come in if you're even in another state. Join us. You need to join because that's where you grow. You dissect the word and you get courage. You get strength. It builds your faith because we have a community every Tuesday night we meet. So if you're not in reach, especially for the ones coming to Crossroads, you need to be in reach. And I guarantee you will never be the same. Now, I could sing right now, but I'm not going to sing because I know Shelby will run screaming from the room. But I will finish with this scripture. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31, Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. I'm going to read that again because the whole thing, remember I started with the definition of boasting? Paul says, therefore, as the scripture says, if you want to boast, <laughs> boast only about the Lord. That's where people will start seeing our lives. He's the only one that gets the glory. He is the only one that gets the praise. Boast only in him. Because as he told Job, who made, as he, I know he told Moses, who made your mouth? That's God. He told Job, did you do this? Did, can you create the Leviathan? Did you put the stars up there? No. We can boast in God. And with that, I'm, 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 I'm all done. Hate to leave you, but it's, it's over. I'm done. I hope you were blessed by this message. Hope you were blessed as I was. Now, at this point, I want to ask anyone who is listening, looking, if you're not saved. Now is a good time since we have gone through this whole entire lesson showing about the greatness, awesomeness of God, that he can be trusted. Because when he says, I will, I will. And if you're not saved, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can do that right now. So I want you to repeat after me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I repent of them. Father, I, I, I accept salvation that Jesus provided. 
I thank you for being my father. I thank you I'm in your kingdom now and Jesus is my Lord. Take me, Father God, take my life and do something with it. And I thank you for salvation today in Jesus' name. And for all those who have made that decision to accept Jesus Christ, I want you to put it in your Bible, July 17th is the day that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay? Thank you so much again, and have a great and blessed day.